Hello. I think everybody can see me now. Yeah, I'm. Welcome to Kim's Facebook page. Uh, I'm Dr. Saharia, working as a chief transplant surgeon at the Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences at Hyderabad since almost last 15 years. Uh, Kim's is uh, has become one of the very leading transplant centers in the whole country. Uh, we started our program way back in 2005, which started only with a kidney transplant, but subsequently it has become a, a multi-organ transplant center. Now we are very regularly in my uh, the, the talk later on. Then we have got a very active uh, liver transplant program, and uh, recently we have started also a very very active heart and lung transplant, particularly lung transplant has become very, very important because even though during the COVID time, there's a huge number of patients from all over the country who develop severe lung infection and ultimately their total lung, they, they get damaged and ultimately they need a, a, a lung transplant for survival. And that is why the team says a very excellent team of doing heart and heart and lung transplant. And that is uh, the kid, Kim's Hospital, we have a day the very, very active transplant program as on today. And of course, like cornea transplant and bone marrow transplant, of course, it is also a, a part of the, uh, the transplant program at Kips. So what I am going to do next about uh, half an hour or so, I give a little idea about uh, what exactly is happening at Kips and how the transplant program has started in the whole country and has come to this level. As you all know that uh, Kidney transplant is the, the best possible treatment as on today uh, for the people who develop terminal kidney failure or end-stage kidney failure. And uh, there are two options they have. One is uh, you can slide, see in the slide that the many of the patients and are still on dialysis because that is one option of treating a kidney failure patient. And of course, uh, that needs a very regular visit to the hospital at least twice or three times a week. You have to lie down in a bed in a hospital and uh, get connected to the, the dialysis machine for about three to four hours. And then you can again go back home. There's no need to get admitted in the hospital. That is one option. But that is, uh, many people doesn't like it because you have to repeatedly come to the, the hospital. And the dialysis has got its own uh, plus and minus points. And of course, that, uh, we are not going to talk about dialysis today. But before the transplant program started, the only treatment available was only hemodialysis. So that at least people can survive for uh, some, some time and they can uh, lead a, uh, I should say, a near normal life. But most important, uh, what happened next? Uh, uh, and this is the, the kidney transplant. The kidney transplant was a very, very experimental procedure uh, before uh, the 1954, 1955. And many people have tried uh, since long time, but it was not a successful uh, treatment option for terminal kidney failure patient. But in 1990, 1954, uh, next, and the, the first successful kidney transplant was done in a hospital in US. And, uh, and that is between the, the donor was and the patient was the two identical twin. You can see in the picture the three person behind the, the two surgeon and one nephrologist that time and the sitting in front of the, the patient and the donor and that is the first successful kidney transplant in the whole world way back in 1954 and that has really revolutionized the, the treatment option for a patient who is suffering from uh, terminal kidney failure and in fact the, the surgeon who operated he was subsequently he was awarded the Nobel Prize for such an initiative uh, for helping so many people to survive after developing a very dreaded disease like uh, total kidney failure. Next. <coughs> and uh, give a little history because we came, I came to Hyderabad in 1981 and on the same year we did the first transplant uh, at Hyderabad and this is the person you can see, he's a Tamilian boy but settled in Hyderabad, his mother was a donor. And those days, of course, we had a very limited uh, experience with kidney transplantation. The infrastructure was not up to the mark. The drugs available were also not that, uh, uh, means not that of good quality. 
to sustain them for a long time. But this person survived for about four years, from 81 to 85 he survived, and subsequently he succumbed. So this is the first kidney transplant was done by me and our team at Hyderabad way back in 1981. Next. <coughs> now in today's topic, one of the important area what we are going to discuss is about the, 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 the donor uh, in, in kidney transplant. Because donor is very important because uh, without a donor there cannot be a successful transplant program. And kidney transplant is one advantage that uh, the God has given us two kidneys and it has been seen uh, over a long period of time that a person with one kidney can live a near normal life. So that indirectly means that the person who donates the kidney is normally doesn't, they're going to develop uh, any problem in the future. So that has given me a lot of confidence both to the, the medical team and the surgical team as well as to the patient <coughs> and the donor. And many people now are coming forward for donation. They realize that yes, that is a very safe procedure and except uh, undergoing a surgery, there's nothing else to worry about. Next. So this, the, the previous slide I showed was uh, because donor, uh, as per the Human Organ Transplant Act, what I'm going to talk a little later, the, only the close family members, they can donate the kidney, like uh, the parents, the siblings, like brothers and sisters. Their children can donate to the parents. Now even the, the new government rule also allow the grandparents uh, to uh, allow to donate the kidney to the grandchildren. And uh, of course the spousal donor is also permitted. The husband can donate to the wife and uh, the wife also can donate to the husband. But this is the first picture. The previous picture I showed you was the between identical twin. There's a twin brother. So one brother who is identical twin has donated to the other brother who unfortunately developed a chronic kidney failure. And this type of kidney transplant between two identical twins, I think give it a maximum best possible result. I think their total outcome is almost nearing 100%. That means a identical twin, suppose they don't, don't the one person donate to the other person, the outcome of the surgery is definitely almost, uh, that they can lead a near normal life and with very little medication. That means the outcome is excellent. Uh, suppose a person is very lucky to get an identical twin donor for his uh, kidney transplant. Next. And uh, we also started uh, because uh, donors always, we really worry about the donor so that donors should not suffer even in the short period, even the long term period. So that is why we are slowly modifying our uh, surgical techniques. Uh, initially, we operated by like a normal, what to give a big cut in the side of the abdomen to remove the kidney. But that is a little, a little painful for the donor because uh, and then and he has to stay in the hospital for about one week to ten days and even post-op also. And the uh, suffering is little much more. So we have developed a technique what is called a laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. So we could uh, do the first laparoscopic donor nephrectomy in the country uh, somewhere in the early 90s. And subsequently, as on today, uh, we have got uh, most of the patient who is undergoing donor nephrectomy or the, who is donating kidney, the operation is done by the laparoscopic means. And, but even the more recently, I think we have also added a robotic surgical technique. That means the, the kidneys are removed by the robotic surgical technique where the, the quality of surgery is much better. And of course, the donor suffering is reduced by about 70 to 80 percent. The donor can be discharged from the hospital within two to three days, and there's very little postoperative pain. So, which is really most concerned uh, for the people who donate the postoperative pain. Now, coming to the Human Organ Transplant Act, because uh, uh, initially uh, the people didn't realize that it can be a huge problem in the near future, so the government also didn't take a lot of initiative. But subsequently, when you realize that there's a huge number of patients, about four to five lakhs patients develop uh, kidney failure every year in the country. So they need some sort of support. So the government also came into the picture and they started what is called as a Human Organ Transplant Act. That means the, 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 this particular operation has to be conducted as per the guidelines given by the respective government in different states. Next. And these are the very important, uh, why this uh, Human Organ Transplant Act was brought into. The number one, the streamline the do organ donation and transplant activity. Because the government should know exactly how the transplant activity is going on all over the country in different hospitals. So all hospitals are supposed to inform 
<coughs> the local government about how many transplant they have done and what are the type of donor they are using and what are the outcome and what are the long term result. So that means this is all being scrutinized by the government agency so that at least the, the very good quality of treatment can be maintained. Secondly, another important thing which is becoming little less nowadays, the commercial dealing in human organ. That is the, the buying and selling of organ, human organs. The government declared not only in India but all over the world that selling and buying of human organ is totally illegal, that should be stopped at any cost. This was going on uh, in, a, in a big way in India uh, before the Transplant Act came into force. But subsequently from 1994 onward, I think it has significantly dropped. I think now you can see that very, very few people uh, only uh, getting a, a donor which is not related to the family. And uh, as I said already that about four to five lakhs people uh, develop total kidney failure. They either need <coughs> long-term dialysis or a kidney transplant. Uh, but uh, mm, not many of them can uh, get the treatment option mainly because that there is not enough kidney donor either within the family or outside. So many people cannot undergo the operation mainly due to lack of human organs. So that is one area the government of India took initiative that how to increase the, the organ donation and particularly the organ donation from the, 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 or the brain dead donor who are declared dead in the hospital whether those people or their next of kin or their relative can be just requested or can be just educated enough so that they come forward for the donation. Next. If you look at this, the organ donation rate uh, is uh, the highest in Spain, that is called now it is about 30 to 34 PM, PM means per million population, that is the highest in the world. A small country like Spain has the highest organ donor, whereas in India, being such a huge country, we are in almost in the lowest, or in the national average is 0 0.4 per million population donation. But now over the last uh, maybe about uh, a decade, the slowly the things have improved with a lot of government initiative and a lot of interest being taken by the both government and private hospitals. The, the organ donation rate uh, in the hospital has increased to about four per million population, not overall I'm talking about. This is mostly in the metro cities where there is active transplant program like Hyderabad, Chennai, Delhi, Mumbai, then Gujarat or Ahmedabad, all these people. The, because of the effort of the, the local government as well as the local hospitals, the, the organ donation rate has significantly improved in, in those part of the country. Next. Now it is very important to know because why the organ donation rate is low in India. The main pop, the reason is that people cannot understand between uh, the cardiac death and the brain death. The cardiac death, as I shown in the picture here, the left side, the people, are the, the two doctors and the nurse, they are pressing on the heart. That means the heart has stopped in this particular patient and they are trying to revive. And many a times it is successful, but most of the time it is not successful and patients are declared dead. That means the, the heart has stopped. That is called cardiac death and the patient is pronounced dead. But next, if you can see, it is a brain death, which is more important as far as the organ transplantation and organ donation is concerned. Because once the brain is dead, because brain controls all the body functions, so once the brain is dead, the other body cannot function independently. So there's a lot of people who develop severe head injury due to accidents. Some people develop brain stroke, some people develop brain hemorrhage, some people develop brain tumor. So those people ultimately, many of them develop brain death. That means they're totally unconscious. The brain doesn't work. So they are admitted into a hospital and though the brain is dead, but the other organs are working, including the heart, lung, liver, kidneys. And those people, once the brain is dead, there is no chance for them to survive. But they can be maintained on artificial support for about a few days, maybe two days, three days, four days, before the, the other organs also slowly die. So this three to four days has become very important for us because that is a time we have to educate the people that yes, once the patient is brain dead, he's almost uh, practically he's dead. And once we remove all the support system, what you can see in the picture is going on because once you remove all that, he immediately he will die. So he is being kept alive only with the support of this machine. So during this time, we request the family whether they are willing to donate the organs of their family members who are in bended already. 
And luckily for us, the, the, the public education has significantly improved, at least in a city like Hyderabad, we have got a very good number of donations. And, uh, but the most important that is to make the people understand then what is the difference between cardiac death and brain death. Next. So this is, uh, we also try uh, to public education by writing articles. This is what uh, I wrote in a newspaper that when do we really die? People normally feel that yes, when the heart is stopped, that is what we call it death. But now the death concept has changed. The change is only because of transplant, because otherwise there is no need to diagnose brain death. Only thing you need to diagnose brain death because those organs are still viable, like liver, kidney, heart, lung, intestine, so many organs, including the cornea. And those organs can be removed and given to somebody who is dying because of the non-functioning of these vital organs. Next. And I come into Kim's now. This is the Kim's Hospital. Uh, this is a beautiful hospital, about uh, one of the largest private sector hospital in the country. The one particular unit is about 1,000 bedded hospital. And uh, we have got a very active, as I said earlier, a very active transplant program involving almost all the organs now, heart, lung, liver, kidney, bone marrow, and then pancreas, and the other organs. So we have got a very, very active transplant program in this particular center. So we are going to talk a little bit about what exactly we are doing at Kim's next. And uh, as I already told you that uh, we have done about more than 30 now. This is the, the figure till 2020, till last year. So now it is almost uh, another, maybe another 10, 15. So these are some of the people who got the benefit of an organ donated by people whose, people whose family members are dead in the hospital because they are brain dead. These are all not by living donation. These are the people who received organ from people who died in the hospital because of brain death. So the numbers are increasing and those people are surviving today because the, the some people have donate, agreed to donate their organs so that these people can get the benefit. This is only I'm talking about the Kims. If you talk about the multiple hospitals in different parts of the country, the number is huge. So definitely awareness is increasing slowly and slowly and then more and more number of people are coming forward to donate. I think that's a very, very healthy sign. At least that is the, the, the biggest gift we can give to someone who is really suffering. Next. And this is, uh, again, I am talking about Kim's. We have got the privilege or the, the, we are very lucky to have the youngest organ donor in the country. He's a six month, 16 month old boy who fell down from the balcony while he was playing and developed severe head injury. And, and his parents were very educated from the army background. And then once he declared brain dead, they didn't hesitate to donate his organs. So his kidneys and other organs were removed for transplantation. The picture on the right side is a, near an 80-year-old man. Normally, at the age of 80 years, the, most of the body organs are not functioning not up to the optimum level. So, but in spite of that, we could take a person who developed severe brain hemorrhage because of uh, stroke, because of long-standing hypertension. So he's developed brain hemorrhage and he died, he developed brain death and he was declared brain dead and their family agreed to donate. So we examined this particular patient by different methods and found that his other organs are near normal, though it is 100% not normal, but at least 90% the function of the kidneys, but the function of the liver was normal. So his family donated, agreed to donate the kidneys and the liver. And this was the oldest donor as far as we know uh, in the whole country. Next. And uh, here I must mention about the because the, the government of Telangana also taken very active initiative in how to propagate the organ donation in the whole state. And there are organizations known as Jivandan and that is totally under the, the Ministry of Health of Government of Telangana. And uh, all the cadaver, uh, cadaver donor program is being totally regulated by that particular organization. And if you can see from 2013 to 2020, this is only seven to eight years, we have got a total organ donor was 721. We could get about 1,229 kidneys, and you can see liver, heart, heart, heart valve, lungs, pancreas. So this is a big boost to the people who are suffering from terminal organ failure and can only look forward to an organ transplant to sustain and to live a near normal life. Next. And of course, our, <coughs> our duty doesn't end there because all the people it's a very, very tragic thing when somebody in the family dies, but still they come forward and donate their organs. And we always make it a point to the, the invite the family member every year 
whosoever has donated their organ, the next stop can we invite them. We recognize their, the, the sacrifice they have made uh, for this benefit of the society. And this is one such picture you can see on a very prominent film personality. He personally came and he uh, means felicitated all the, the donor family members. Next. There are different types of organ because organ donor, because as I told you, because the biggest problem as on today, the acute shortage of uh, the organ donor, uh, in spite of all the effort, there are many people who cannot get the benefit of organ transplant. But the medical fraternity is looking for different options. The one of the options I'm showing it here is a swap transplant. Suppose in the one family they have got a donor who is A group, but the donor, the patient is B group. They cannot be transplanted because the blood group incompatibility is there. If you look at the other family, the recipient is B and the donor is A, that means they are also not matching. But if you cross them, so for the family number two can donate to the family number one, the same group, and family number one also can donate to family number two. This is called a swab transplant. The swab transplant, both the family has to sit together, they understand the whole problem, they should discuss, and then mutually agree, yes, we are ready to ex exchange our organs between the two families, and this way, I think we can reduce some, at least some amount of the organ shortage which is prevailing in this pre present day situation. Next. Another very important thing is uh, coming as ABL incompatible transplant because till few years back it was absolutely not possible to do a the transplant across the blood, blood group barrier, what do you call it. Suppose the B group patient can get a kidney from a B group donor or O group donor. The A group patient can either get A group donor or a O group donor, but suppose in the family I have only A group patient, but my donor is B, where do I go? But still, the medical fraternity with a lot of research activity found that even ABO incompatible transplant, a person with B group also can donate to A group, a person with A group also can donate to B group, with some limitations are there, but still it is now possible. So this is the a ABO incompatible kidney transplant. In KIMS also, we have got a good number of patients who underwent ABO incompatible kidney transplant. They are doing extremely well. Next. The third is, as you, I didn't tell you, didn't go into all the detail, because as on today, there's a huge number of patients, because the diabetics, diabetics is increasing alarmingly in the whole country, and diabetes has become one of the leading cause of kidney failure, in, not only in India, but across the globe. But those patients, those are type 1 diabetes who develop diabetes at a very young age, who are sustaining life only on insulin and their kidneys are damaged, those patients can be saved by transplanting both the pancreas who is giving insulin to the body and the kidney as well. So this is the, in KIMS also we have done about a couple of patients who underway a type 1 diabetic patient who, who was transplanted both with kidney as well as pancreas in the same sitting and they do extremely well and their diabetes uh, under, get under totally control, they don't need any more insulin and then they don't need also dialysis because the kidney also functions normally. Next. And that is why <coughs> suppose as on today we have got different type of transplant at the Kim's hospital. Number one you can see a live related transplant between the donor is within the family. Second is live run related, suppose the spouse donor to the husband the wife donate to the husband, the husband donate to the wife, we call it a spousal donor, that is also I call it unrelated donor. Cadaver transplant means a person who is a brain dead person who donate organ, that is cadaver transplant. We have got pediatric transplant, very young boys like 4 years, 5 years, 6 years, they undergo transplant. ABI incompatible transplant, just now I mentioned what is ABI incompatible transplant. Swap donor also, as I mentioned. <coughs> and first ever inter-hospital swap donor transplant in Telangana, we have done the first one. One donor and the recipient was in our hospital, another donor and recipient in other hospital. The organ from that hospital was brought to this hospital and organ from this hospital was shifted to the other hospital so that both the transplant can be done simultaneously. So these are a different type of transplant, kidney transplant we are now presently undertaking at Kim's hospital. Next. And of course, recently we have uh, completed 1,000 kidney transplant. This was last year only. This is a milestone uh, for a hospital, big hospital like kidney. And as I told you, we have got a very, very, very active uh, kidney transplant program. We have a huge team, about 30 to 40 people involved in the, in the field of our kidney transplant, including our uh, the, the doctors, the paramedical staff, the nurses, and the, the transplant technician, the transplant coordinators, and so on. So it is a huge team effort. 
And because of the team effort, most probably we could do a, the large number of kidney transplant with a very excellent result. Next one. Now, always a question asked, uh, what is the, the people always worried, what is the long-term uh, kidney transplant survivor? Because these are the, some of the pictures I'm showing you here. We operated maybe about 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years back. Still, they are maintaining a normal health. So I can only assure you that the kidney, the kidney transplant is a very, very uh, successful treatment option for patient with kidney failure, and there no, should be no hesitation in undergoing a kidney transplant. The results are excellent. Uh, only thing you have to take some drug very regularly to sustain that kidney, and otherwise there will be no major issue as far as the transplant is concerned. Next. And of course, lastly, uh, the one of the success story of the transplant is that the one, the, the gentleman there, he's from Pune, he underwent a kidney transplant with us, and uh, the girl on the left side uh, underwent kidney transplant in Mumbai Hospital. Uh, they came to Hyderabad for a kidney transplant sports meet, and both of them met and they decided to get married. So this is one of the very rare example that uh, both the kidney transplant recipient uh, uh, getting married, and of course, subsequently, uh, the lady uh, he passed away after about eight years of marriage, and they have got a daughter. The father is still alive, he is settled in Pune, and they are leading both the father and daughter extremely happy to have a, a, a normal life. And uh, that is the end of it. I think uh, uh, I could give you some idea about kidney transplant and what is happening at Kim's Hospital as on today. And I will be really happy, suppose any doubt you want to get clarified, and we have got our uh, uh, YouTube channel, you can also respond to 